Section 10.1, arithmetic sequences. So an arithmetic sequence is one such that successive terms, a n plus 1 and a n, so terms next to each other, have a fixed difference of d. So if I subtract the two terms, I get a difference of d. We call that a common difference. And so this formula recursively would be defined as an plus 1 equals an plus d. That's my common difference. We actually saw this last time. Example 5 would be an example of an arithmetic sequence with a common difference of 3. And that's because we were going by 3s. It was always the previous term plus 3. If you found the difference between any two terms, that difference would be 3. So 8 minus 5 is 3. 11 minus 8 is 3. So they have that common difference. So we're counting by 3s, basically. Um, so let's find a formula for the general term, because sometimes we like general um, better than recursive. Um, it's easier to find like the hundredth term with the general formula than recursive, because recursive, you'd have to find all the terms to get there. So let's try to find the general term. So if a n plus 1 is a n plus d, um, that would mean we, um, let's find a 2 would be a 1 plus d, a 3 would be a 2 plus d, a 4 would be a 3 plus d, and so on. Right, previous term plus the difference. Um, but let's see if we can make these look a little more similar. So I'm going to just replace a 2 with a1 plus d. So we get a1 plus d plus d, or we get a1 plus 2d. So then a4 would be a3, which I'll replace with a1 plus 2d. We just found that. And then plus another d for the common difference. So we get a1 plus 3d. And we could keep going. And so we'll say a n is equal to the first term plus some number times that common difference. So it looks like 4 we're timesing by 3. For the third term, we're timesing by 2. So that I think that would be n minus 1. Right? If n is 4, then n minus 1 is 3. If n is 3, n minus 1 is 2. And then times that common difference. And that'll be our general term. So this could be a little bit easier to find like the hundredth term. Um, recursively, you'd have to find the 99th term to even get to the hundredth. But now I can find the hundredth term without doing that. Um, the last type of sequence we're going to cover for now is called a geometric. And this is when we actually multiply. Um, they create a fixed ratio. So if I do the a n plus 1 divided by a n, we get a ratio. And so if we multiply by a n, we get a recursive formula as a n plus 1 equals a n times r. So basically, previous term times r. So we'll look at examples in a second, but let's find um, a formula again for the general term. So I'm going to have a 1 just equal a, just to abbreviate the first term. And so then a 2 is a 1 times r, or just a times r. A3 would be A2 times R, right? A4 would be A3 times R, and so on, right? Previous term times R. So this could be multiplying every term by 2 or multiplying every term by 3. Um, we'll see one in a second. But let's do what we did last time. So I'm going to rewrite A2 as A times R. So A3 will be A2, or A times R, times R. So it'll be A times R squared. A4 will be A3, which we just defined as A times R squared, times another R. So we'll get A times R cubed. So in general, AN will be A times R to the N minus 1 power. So that'll be our general term. So let's look at examples so we can see how we can use this information. I'm just going to label this general term as a reminder. So I have two sequences in example seven, and we want to decide if they're arithmetic or geometric, and then we'll find the um, recursion in general form for them. So in example A, we're doing one half, one, three halves, two. Um, so this looks linear, right? Like we're adding, 
Looks like we're adding one half every time, so that would be arithmetic. So we'll find the general term and the recursion formula just to get practice with both. So the general term for arithmetic um, we have is a n equals a1 plus n minus 1 times that common difference. So a1 would be my first term. So a1 would be 1 half plus n minus 1. And then my common difference is what are we adding? Looks like it's plus 1 half plus 1 half. So d would be 1 half. And so we times by 1 half. And that's our formula. Um, let's just see if we can simplify it a little bit. So we get 1 half plus 1 half n minus 1 half. So our general term would just be 1 half n. Cool. And then the recursion relation is the one where we do previous term. So sometimes one is more useful than the other. Um, so recursion, we just had a n plus 1 is the previous term plus the difference. So we'll say a n plus 1 is 1 half, oops, is a n plus 1 half, where a 1 is 1 half also. So with recurrence relations, um, you just have to define the first term. Otherwise, we never know how to start the problem. All right, let's look at part B. Um, we have negative 1 half, 1, negative 2, 4. So I notice I don't notice a common difference on this one. Instead, I notice that we're multiplying. So negative 1 half times negative 2 will bring me to 1. Um, another way you could find this is you could do a2 divided by a1. So 1 over negative 1 half gives me negative 2. Or a3 over a2 gives me negative 2 over 1 or negative 2, right? We have that common ratio. Or maybe you just notice that we're doing times negative 2 times negative 2, right? There's just different ways of visualizing this. So my r is negative 2 in this example. So my general term, we could look at the formula above. We get a n is the first term times the ratio to the n minus 1. So my first term is negative 1 half. And then we get negative 2 to the n minus 1 for my common ratio. And that's it. The 2s don't cancel because the negative 2 has a power of n minus 1 and the negative 1 half does not have a power. So just keep them separate. And then let's do that recurrence relation recursion. Um, so we define the first term would be negative 1 half. And then a n plus 1 was that previous term times the ratio. And so we'll just plug in negative 2. a n times negative 2. I would probably prefer to write it as negative 2 a n. It just looks a little nicer. But that would be the recursion formula. So define the first term. And then we just multiply every term by negative 2, right? Times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. So those are two different ways of finding formulas.